that's it. We're at the end of the day. It's almost home time, which is the best time of the day. Um, so we've returned to the pointy that we put on earlier. Um, a good few hours have gone past now. It's nice and warm. It's probably about 20, 23 degrees, uh, which means that the mortar will be going off uh, quite rapidly. Luckily, there's no sun blazing down because the sun comes past in the morning on this aspect. Um, so we, the mortar's gone off um, beautifully enough to, to scrape it off. So when the mortar's in this state, it's called green hard. Um, which means it, that cure has just started to happen, started to cure, it started to go off. And you can tell if it's green hard because you can either use a fingernail um, or any, some kind of implement and we'll just push it in. You know, you put a fair bit of, put a fair bit of force behind it, you can see how it's, oh, it's just indented it a little bit. If it was fresh, more to that knife would go straight into the wall. So we know that because this is green hard now, we're good to, we're good to go on this. So what we use, um, there's so many different ways of finishing mortar. The way that works best for us, we found, is use a bread knife and a variety of brushes. Um, so the bread knife, we scrape off that fat. So we spoke earlier about uh, the fat. So when, we, when we're working the mortar into the joint, um, the, the finest, for the finer aggregates, so the pointing sand and the cement will come to the top. Uh, so we don't want that because when you get uh, like a finer sand uh, or a finer mortar even, when the sun's blazing down and you get a temperature fluctuation throughout the day, um, if you don't have uh, a coarse aggregate in your mix, you will get micro cracks forming. Um, and then when, when winter comes and the rain's blasting into the wall, the, the moisture finds its way through those micro cracks into the wall and we're back to square one. So we don't want that. So what I found best is when the, is we've scraped this fat off, because then we're back to like a, a fresh mortar, and there's like a there's a varied amount of aggregate in there. So we've got uh, we've got the medium grit, the medium sand from the Warrington Fell sand, and the pointing sand in equal proportions. So if we were just to leave uh, the fat, all we'd have at the surface is the majority of the mix would be pointing sand and cement and get the micro cracks forming. So what we do is we just use the bread knife and we just run it across the surface of that pointing. And what we're looking to, to reach is, so we, we want a nice clean line of that, ha that aris on that stone and this aris here. So we've got a nice, flush um well it's, it's called flush pointing this style that we're doing so when the when the water or the rain falls onto it it's it's not sat on any lips of the stone here it's running straight down straight down to the ground as fast as it possibly can because we don't want any 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 moisture sat on this wall so we scrape back our irises like so and we just go over everything that we've done this afternoon. Just nice and flat. And we found that it's a lot easier when you're scraping off. Um, if you just stay in one area. Because otherwise you will find that you miss bits. Because you've been doing a little bit here. Oh, it's a bit there. A little bit, a little bit there. So if you just stay in one area. You're not missing any joints then. Scrape them off. Every joint is Aris to Aris. Nice fresh mortar. Uh, that's going to cure properly. So what we can, you can also do, was if you're pointing in a, uh, if it's a cooler time of the year, like autumn, uh, potentially into winter, as long as it's not down to five degrees, because um, if any temperatures less than five degrees will retard the curing of this mortar, uh, and potentially fail the mortar if some frost gets into it. Um, so we all really point up to the edge of uh, the depth of winter with cement. Uh, if you're using lime, 
you want to be giving over pointing like perhaps a month before the first frost date. Um, there is additives you can put into your lime mix to make it cure the a tiny little bit quicker. Um, we don't tend to put them in uh, any mortar mixes. Uh, you can put frost proofer and hardener in it, uh, rapid hardener, um, but you, you pretty much 100% of the time you'll guarantee that there's been salts added to those uh, the hardeners and the, the accelerators and they always bleed out. So I tend to never use any sort of hardener or frost proofer in my mix because I know that it's going to ruin the job. And bad news travels better than good news. So when people look at the job that you've done and there's like white more white salt stains all over it, you're not going to be getting the phone ain't going to be ringing for you to come and point up their gable. So once you find something that works right for you, stick at it. Uh, so we've got the last. That's the last bit of the scrape in there. So all arises are clean. Do then is we use the soft brush doesn't matter if it's nylon or bristle brush we we'll just brush the loose off what we've uh, what we've scraped off there go back to clean water and then what we use is that that's a nylon churn brush same again you can use a nylon bristle brush as long as it's stiff and we beat the wall back It's not delicate this, so you can you kind of like fairly wallop it. So what this action does is if you see where we scratched it off, you see them mortar stains there, and we haven't got like a nice clean iris yet. So what we do is we beat this back. And these bristles clean uh, any extra mortar off there. So if you have a look at that, you see. We can't really see the iris because of the mortar stains there. But once I've beaten that back, it really defines those irises. It cleans the, cleans the mortar off them joints. Saying the stone takes precedent of the job, not the mortar. Let's go all along with that. And another benefit of beating it back with the nylon brush is it does compact that first that surface few millimetres of uh, of your mortar. So when that's nice and compacted, you know you've got a, a weatherproof joint that can stand the test of time for the next 25, 30 years. Uh, that's about the time duration that you'd expect to get out of a cementitious uh, repoint of a wall. If you're using lime and you've, used it and you've mixed it properly, uh, it could potentially last thousands of years. The house will probably fall down before the uh, the lime needs redoing again. Um, but you'll get about 25, 30 years out of the cement pointed wall. Which you'll do most folk until they sell it on to someone else. So, we've beaten that back. All those, uh, all those stones are nice and clean. You can see the irises now. with that and then we go over it again with a soft brush that just gives our finished texture there just like that and what we don't want is any brush marks in the, uh, the finished mortar we just want a nice clean uh, textured finish so if there's any brush marks we can just beat them back with a soft brush and it leaves that nice stippled, stippled effect of the mortar. Then once this is cured, the, uh, the stone will take precedent over the mortar. Like that, marvellous. But the job isn't done yet because this, uh, with the cement pointing, uh, cement, cementitious mortar, you'll, it'll take you know, 50 to 60 days to fully cure. Uh, to its optimum hardness, which is a lot less than a lime-based cement. Um, but for the first week, it's critical that uh, this doesn't get battered with rain, don't get any frost. All it, just as damaging can be uh, a strong wind blowing over it because it's going to be drying that more, drying that moisture out of the mortar way quicker than it uh, is ideal. 
the sun's blazing down on the wall. Um, say on a, a 25 degree day, surface of this storm could easily be getting up to the high 30s. So you're getting a big fluctuation in that the temperature of that mortar as it's curing. So for the first week, it's vital that we cover this up. Uh, so what we use is Hessians, the natural material. Um, and we just drape, we'll put some weights on here. And we're just going to cover this wall up. Cover all. Right. And once we've weighted that down, we know that ain't gonna be blowing off into the neighbor's garden. It's a nice long one, so that can go over the uh, the ridge there. And on a red hot day. What you can do is once you've hung your hessians, you can soak, soak the hessians down, well, moisten them with what with, uh, with the sprayer again. You don't want to get a hose pipe on it because you can see through it. So if you blast that with a hose pipe, you're basically going to pressure wash in the wall. So if you use your sprayer, moisten them down, then it'll keep a nice ambient temperature behind you and that, that mortar can carry on curing. Oh, a few more. One, one. With the long ones, we can double them up. Being Hessian, it's very easy to cut. So, if you can get your knife out, it's easy to cut. There we are. Just run the knife down. You can buy Hessians in rolls of like, but I think we, I think these ones that we get are in like uh, 60 meter rolls, 50 meter rolls. So if you buy a roll of that, you know you've got enough to do your job then. There we are. That's hung. And just this little section left to do. And if it is approaching winter time, um, you could even wrap uh, the Hessians with uh, a plastic sheet so that'll keep the frost make sure that the frost doesn't get down to the wall and that your job's protected so when spring comes round again you know that when your hessians are coming down uh, you'll still have a beautiful pointed wall beneath so we can just put some timbers on top of that now leave it to do its thing for like at least a week even in the summertime because uh, we don't know what the weather's going to be doing. Uh, if come a storm, they could uh, retard the curing of this of this water. So we'll leave this on now um, for a week. Come back and strip it off. It's exactly the same. We'll probably go down to the next lift and we'll have a look at what, how we've hung the Hessians on the lift below. So, so down the lift below, um, and all we do with the ease is we use the scaffolding. So the scaffolding poles come out. Um, so like a couple few inches away from the wall and exactly the same process uh, we cut the hessians to the, the height of the lift then just cut a hole in it they quite comfortably just sit over the scaffold bars there we've done projects where it's come like some serious uh, winter storms and these hessians stay on like that um, so yeah that's that right well we'll return in a week's time when we've stripped everything down um, and we'll have a look at the finished job uh, but you can see there how the so this has been on the wall now maybe four or five days it's pointing it's curing nicely and you can see how the colors change because uh, when we first scraped it off you can see that Waddington fell coming through the sand like that orange colored mortar 
Um, but as it's curing, it does uh, it does uh, cure to more a more subtle brown colour. Um, you can uh, you can put additives in, and pigments into your mix if you want to change the colour of the mortar. Uh, and if you were to do a stronger mix, which would be wouldn't be advisable on uh, a walleye. So if you were to say use a four to one, you'd be left with a much greyer mix in there. Um, uh, you don't really want to be using like a strong mix. Um, on your wall because as, as I was saying earlier with the temperature fluctuation and the sun beating down on it a strong mix will crack so this five to one is a, a certain degree of flex in it um, so if your sun blazing down on this it ain't going to be cracking so it's like an idea I've found that it's an ideal mix um, for this part of England with these weather conditions uh, to provide a weatherproof wall so I say we'll return when these Hessians come down, we'll have a look at the finished job.